Charlie, if you win the fight, I give you the keys. My keys. Yep, you have to win the fight though. Okay. Charlie is a spunky six-year-old boy. Every day he wakes up. He's just, he hits the ground running and he just has a smile and a twinkle in his eyes and it just makes me laugh. You're getting the keys. <laughs> he loves anything car related. He loves it when we have to go to the mechanics. That is better than any amusement park to him. He was so isolated for so many years that car rides were one of the few things that he could do. I like to eat mommy. For a long time, he loved car washes so much. And so every day we went to the car wash. They actually knew us so well because we were there so often that one year the car wash employees got a Christmas present for Charlie because we were there so often. My name is Katie and my son Charlie has congenital athymia. Katie and I have been married a good chunk of time now, almost two decades. We have four children, so I'm very busy. So because Charlie had no T cells, it was too dangerous for him to go anywhere and for his siblings as well. And so our home had to become his own bubble. Uh oh, here I come. T cells are the main component of the immune system. They go through a process where there's these thymic epithelial cells that are presenting them with what they should react to and what they shouldn't react to. You will never really be able to have a functioning immune system if the T cells are not um, gone through that process. And so when Charlie was born, we, you know, normal delivery, we came home and we had basically a week of bliss with our family all together and I got a phone call from the pediatrician's office when he was a week old saying that the newborn screening came back and it showed uh, no T cells or no immune system and they told me I need to come in for blood work immediately, stay off the internet, don't look anything up. But I love research, I love finding out things, so I was like, oh, well, I wanna know what this is. And then as we learned that it was congenital athymia, and they told us, you know, life expectancy was anywhere from one year to two years at the most, that hit us pretty hard. He came to my clinic, I think he was like only 11 days old. He had been flagged on the newborn screen and we had his flow cytometry test to confirm that he definitely did not have T cells. And from there, he was diagnosed with 22Q11 deletion syndrome and one of the condition is congenital athymia. And they were able to diagnose him using blood tests with the 22Q deletion syndrome, also known as DeGeorge syndrome, and the congenital athymia. CA can be caused by a lot of different known genetic causes. There are two known categories, genetic conditions, your FOX N1 or your PAX1 um, gene disorders. The other set are involved in structural development during um, embryonic development of a baby. So with DeGeorge, for example, one of the genes in the region that's deleted is called TBX1. That gene is really important in uh, promoting the development of arteries to supply blood to that region. Um, so that whole uh, group of things will be affected if that TBX1 is not around. The heart, the thymus, and the parathyroid glands. 
and because he looked like he might have DeGeorge, I asked them to get an echo there, and it did turn out that he had no blood flow to his left lung, like complete pulmonary artery atresia. And then he was sent to get a stent um, placed. Patient support groups were invaluable to me. I remember would call them in the middle of the night for emotional support or advice when things were going on and they were always there and willing to help and answer my questions. CA is managed by uh, prevention of infection. We give human immunoglobulin or antibodies that are pooled and given by infusion. Um, once a month or once a week. And then we also use prophylactic antibiotics against the kinds of infections. Charlie ended up staying in the NICU for about eight months. He needed open heart surgery to fix that left coronary artery. He had a history of getting fevers that sometimes would go up to 104 out of the blue. And there were many times where he was dependent on oxygen or couldn't eat or sleep because he was so sick. What are you gonna make me if you eat? Where's mommy? Okay, is it hot or cold? When you are told that there's a good chance that your son isn't going to live, it's amazing the things that don't matter anymore. And I stopped caring if he would talk or walk because those were so secondary to him just living. And, you know, there were so many times that he would be sick or something and I would just be terrified that you know, I should be grateful for the time that I had with him because he's not going to make it much longer. For patients with CA and their families, isolation is one of the hardest parts. And to have that family apart was just heart-wrenching. The interesting thing for Charlie, because even when he was in the hospital, in the NICU for so long, everyone wore a mask. And so to some extent, I think Charlie just thought, People wore masks, and that's just what people look like, and he didn't know a difference. It was really hard for me because I wanted him to be able to see us smile and laugh and see what people look like. We had a lot of hope that he would be able to start living a normal life like his siblings, but we still didn't know if I go to the grocery store and I come home, am I bringing home a virus that's gonna kill my son? That was the constant fear in my head. But in true Charlie fashion, he did it on his own times and it was still about two and a half years before he was able to get out of isolation. So he was about four and a half years old before he could start being around other people. I love you. One of the other things with 22Q that Charlie has is apraxia um, of speech where and he didn't even try and talk until he was about five and a half. Um, and I had taken American Sign Language classes in college, so that's what I worked with him on. He also had an AAC device on a tablet that he could use to talk. And about a year ago, he started even attempting to talk. And so between his American Sign Language and the communication device and talking, he is very much a chatterbox and <laughs> talks all day long now. His life has really changed. He went from being isolated to being able to 
participate, play jujitsu, um, just run around outside. It's really basic, basic science research that has gone from the lab all the way to the bedside that has allowed this to happen. Amazing. I think one of my favorite things is watching how the other kids interact with Charlie. They just treat him like any other kid, like there's nothing wrong with him. And I absolutely love that. The future looks so good and so bright for him. I'm so excited to see him grow. We took a cruise a few months ago, wanted to have a normal vacation with him and his siblings. Sometimes I remind myself that this is what I prayed for. I prayed for you to be this spunky little boy, and he really is. Playing the weight. You love waves?